Have you eaten kale today? I bet you have. Maybe you blended it into a smoothie or you had a kale salad for lunch or maybe you turned kale into chips and snacked on them. Well, kale is everywhere these days. There's hashtags, bumper stickers, t-shirts telling us to eat more kale. But I'm here to do some PR for another green, which is my favorite, collard greens. And Dan's here, he's gonna show us why we should be making them and a great way to eat them. So I'm totally with you. I think collards are one of the best winter greens. They're inexpensive. They hold up really well to long cooking, pick up tons of flavor. Yes. So we're gonna flavor pack these collards. All right. And that always starts with bacon. All good things start with bacon. They do. So I have six slices of bacon that I cut into quarter inch wide strips, and we're gonna render them out and crisp them up here in this Dutch oven. So I'm gonna place this over medium heat. So this is gonna take about eight to 10 minutes. We wanna go low and slow. So while that is happening, I'm gonna finish prepping my collards over here. So we're starting with two pounds. It ends up looking like a lot, but it's gonna be the perfect amount when we're done. The big thing is we just wanna get rid of the stem. So one way I like to do it, just kind of fold over the leaf and trace down both sides like that and pop it out. And I'll do the same with these ones here. And then stack them up. And then I'm gonna cut crosswise. We want roughly three inch pieces. They seem kind of big when they're raw, but they wilt down really nicely. Okay. So collards, like a lot of greens, can be pretty gritty. So what you wanna do is cut them and then wash them. Get them into a pool of water here. So you wanna massage them a little bit in here just to let the grit fall to the bottom. Then you pull the greens out. These happen to be really clean, but if they're dirty, you can do that in a few different changes of water. Okay. We're not gonna worry about super drying these. They're gonna go into the pot and a little bit of water is gonna help them wilt down. Great. So we're gonna leave them a little bit wet. So we'll just keep stirring this and cooking our bacon probably about eight to 10 minutes until we have a nice rendered fat and crispy bacon. Sounds good. Oh man, this bacon looks so good. Mm, crispy, crispy. Beautiful crispy. And that fat is just as important. We're gonna put that to good use here. So first step is I'm gonna get my bacon out with a slotted spoon. All right, so I'm gonna pour the fat off. I wanna see how much is in there. We're gonna use two tablespoons of it in the dish. And see, that's what I add to my smoothies in the morning instead of kale. <laughs> All right, so there's one and two tablespoons. So our next big flavor element is onion. We're gonna use a red onion, which is a little bit sweeter. I really like it here. It also is kind of pretty in the final dish. Yes. We're just gonna trim the ends here. And then we are going to cut this pole to pole. So that means going along the grain. Mm -hmm. It means at the end, the onion is gonna hold together a little bit better. If it went across the grain, it kind of melts in during the long right. cook time, which would also be fine, but it's nice to have a little more onion presence in there. All right, so whenever we're cutting onions, we want a nice flat surface to work with. We want nice dry hands. We wanna use our nice bear claw on here. So these are about quarter inch thick. Now I always like when I get about halfway through and it's gonna to start to get a little more precarious, I always like to knock it down. And nice. you're just repeating that same task over again. Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna transfer this over to my pot now. And I still have this over medium heat. So you have a nice little sizzle. So I'm gonna cook this, stirring kind of frequently so we can get all that fond up off the bottom. It's gonna take four to five minutes until they're nice and softened. All right. Okay, these look gorgeous. Yep. Smell pretty good too. Yeah, they do. All right, next up is five cloves of garlic that is minced and an eighth of a teaspoon red pepper flakes. Nice. Just a little bit of heat in there. Just stir this in and cook for about a minute. We just want really nice fragrant garlic. Okay, that looks great. So we're gonna start adding our greens. So we're actually gonna start with half, put the lid on and then let them wilt down for about a minute. It's gonna give us space to get the rest in. Gotcha. All right, and a minute has gotten us. Some nice wilting going on there. Just a gentle wilting. Just enough room for us to get the rest in there. Gotcha. So the rest of our collards go in, and then we're gonna add some liquid. So we've got a cup of chicken broth and a cup of water, and then a quarter teaspoon salt. And just give this a little stir here. Okay, I'm gonna quickly cover it. We wanna trap all that steam that's being produced by the broth and the water that we just added in. And now I'm gonna lower this to medium low. So we're gonna cook these for about 35 to 45 minutes, stirring occasionally until they wilt down and become really tender, but still with that nice kind of meaty bite. Mm, yes. All right, so it's been about 40 minutes. Ooh, that is beautiful. Silky. Oh, look at those. So we're gonna cook this over medium high heat, stirring occasionally for about eight to 12 minutes until we drive off that liquid. And then you hear a little sizzle, and that's when you know you're done. All right, I don't know about you, but I hear a sizzle. It's singing. Singing, right? Singing collards. So this is awesome. This is done. I'm gonna turn off the heat. 
slide it over here. So we're gonna season this up a little bit. First off, we're gonna add our bacon back in. The most important seasoning. The most important seasoning, exactly. I'm also adding a tablespoon each of cider vinegar and a tablespoon of olive oil. Stir that in. Every stir brings up a new combination of aromas. So I'm gonna give a quick little taste here. We're gonna adjust seasoning. That's really good. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. And I think one of the key flavors for good collards is good pepper. Sure. Yep. Plenty of pepper on there. I also think it could use a little more brightness. So I'm gonna okay. add a little bit more cider vinegar. Adjusting with salt and pepper and acid is nice for most recipes, especially important here. Okay, time to serve them up. Collars go great with everything, but you know what? They don't need anything else. They don't. Mess of greens, that's all you need. Mess of greens, there we go. Mm. Silky. Tender, they're not mushy at all. They're mm -hmm. just tender. What I love about collard greens is they make you fight for them a little bit. There's you know? some bite to it. You gotta earn it. Yeah. No, I love that. So many greens can just get completely mushed out, right. really, really soft. And these have awesome texture to them. And they're coated in that liquid. It's like a dressing on the outside of it. This is a collard salad. This is my kind of collard right. salad. Smoky bacon, that sweet pork flavor. Love the cider vinegar. Mm. Mm. This reminds me of a poem called Mama Fix Collard Greens for Me by Roger Swagler. It was written in 1984. So the collards arrived and her daughter was sad as she looked at them there on the plate. But just then a friend tried the greens and said, ooh, these are great. <laughs> like you. <laughs> and now in New York, you'll not find wine and cheese at the clearly most fashionable scenes. Oh no, if you're, and you, are upwardly mobile and hip, the smart thing to eat is Collard greens? Collard greens. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. If you want to make collard greens at home, and believe me, you do, start by cooking bacon until it's crisp. In the meantime, prep and wash collard greens. Remove the bacon and saute onion in that bacon fat. Stir in half of the greens until they start to wilt. Add the remaining greens, chicken broth, and water, and cook it all covered until tender. Remove the lid and cook off any excess liquid, and then stir in the bacon, cider vinegar, and olive oil. Season to taste with salt and pepper and serve. So there you have it from America's Test Kitchen, braised winter greens with bacon and onion. So now knowing you can do this with collards and not kale. I mean, what is kale? What is, what's kale? What is it? What is it? It's so last year. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.